J.L. Austin was an early 20th century British philosopher of language. In his best-known work, How to Do Things with Words, Austin pointed out that we use language to do things as well as to assert things, and thus called his philosophy speech act theory. He classified speech according to intention and coined four key terms we'll define in this video. The most important takeaway from Austin's theory is the understanding that to speak is to act. This way of thinking about speech is important because it provides insight into the utility of human communication, namely that humans use communication as a tool to further their own ends. Utterance J.L. Austin's first term is utterance, and utterance by itself has no particular meaning. It's merely a string of words. Look at this example from everyday life. Oh. Oh. Propositional utterance. Austin's second key term is propositional utterance. A propositional utterance is one that contains a reference to something else. Look at this example from everyday life. Hmm, coffee. Elocutionary utterance. Austin's third key term, elocutionary utterance, means to speak with the intention of interacting with the receiver. Thus, an elocutionary utterance must be one said to another person. Here is another example from everyday life. Oh, I'm tired. Perlocutionary utterance. Austin's fourth key term is perlocutionary utterance, which means to speak with the intention of affecting the behavior of the receiver. Thus, this utterance is explicitly tied up in speaking to another person and seeking to influence them. For example, take a look at this sermon, an explicitly perlocutionary genre. The reason why they are not fallen already and do not fall now is only that God's appointed time is not come. For it is said that when that due time or appointed time comes, their foot shall slide. Then they shall be left to fall as they are inclined by their own weight. God will not hold them up in these slippery places any longer, but will let them go. These categories are helpful when thinking about the ways that humans interact with each other and with their environments through language. When speaking to and around others, more often than not, we humans are in fact attempting to affect the behavior of others. These categories are useful. But is there a way in which all of these utterances can be interpreted as perlocutionary? That is, could all of them be reinterpreted as seeking to affect the behaviors of others? Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this too loud? Won't you just turn it off and come to bed? Did the main character's original utterance, I'm tired, encapsulate her later requests that her partner come to bed? In this way, was the original illocutionary utterance, in fact, a perlocutionary one? Hmm, coffee. Do many seemingly innocent statements in fact seek to elicit a change in the behavior of those around the speaker? Oh. Oh. You look like you're having a bad day. Would you like this extra donut I have? Do our most basic utterances actually have deeper intentions that seek to affect the way we interact with other people? Did all of the original utterances contain the perlocutionary intent from the beginning, even in the shortened version first shown? These scenes provoke bigger questions about rhetoric and the coercive nature of all speech acts. For example, are all utterances perlocutionary? Is all language rhetorical? <laughs>